Are you single this Valentine's Day? We have suggestions to make it a little less sad. And is masturbating cheating? And how to have a successful three-way coming up today. Well, not the three-way, just the topic. Coming up today on The Point. Hello and welcome to The Point, the only talk show bringing gay and straight men together to see what happens. And Ori is still on vacation, so we are joined once again by fashionista and actor Dinesh Hanbury. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it looks like we've jammed another dude in here. We have, uh, that, well, a typical Saturday night. Um, oh we're all... <laughs> Here we go, here we go, cheers. Since we're also coming up on Valentine's Day, we have a special guest with us today, psychotherapist and relationship columnist, Adam Siegel. Hello. 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 Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, and Adam, so you write a column uh, for In Magazine. I do, So yeah. uh, tell us- Is that In a Magazine? In, in, in a Magazine. In, oh. in Magazine. Oh. Magazine. <laughs> Uh, uh, so what's the column about? The column is essentially a classic kind of sex in the city style relationship advice column where people write in asking about their relationship woes or mental health questions in the context of relationships and then I answer them back. What, what's the most surprising question you ever got? Oh. Or a surprising question? None of them have been really, really out there. I think sometimes they're just really complicated. People want me to be able to tell them exactly what to do in complex relationship issues, and they usually try not to do that. Is he really going to leave her for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like what, yeah. Well, we have a lot of questions for you today, which leads us to our first talking point, stupid Cupid. Ooh. We no need to explain. <laughs> um, we all know that the focus of Valentine's Day is usually couples, but that leaves a lot of single people sort of out in the cold. Um, uh, this one article from the Huffington Post had five offbeat Valentine's Day activities for single people, and some of them were a, a bit, dress up your pet and invite him to dinner. <laughs> Didn't we say we were going to make it less sad? Yeah. After dinner, do some adult coloring. Ugh, I can't. Is I that like drawing that. dicks? I, I could never get into that whole coloring People thing. say it's so calming, but I know, really, I know. My mom it's does just it actually. My mom does it, and she's actually really like good at it. Books? I have this like yeah. giant thing. It's like this big. It's like plaque that she did of these like uh, butterflies thing. Like she spent like a hundred hours working on it. I have it on the wall in my room, but it's like on the it's, refrigerator with a magnet. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's actually really impressive. Um, invite a few single friends over and host a Valentine's hunt. Uh, watch something. Hunt? What is that? Uh, I guess it's like a scavenger hunt. Or an like Easter egg hunt. Easter egg hunt. <laughs> it just be like just hunting down yeah, those people, those couples, and just murdering yeah, them. Yeah, I thought it was like a hunting Damn down. Damn you. Or like a um, watch something other than a rom-com, um, and then get on your webcam and live stream chat. And that just sounded <laughs> a little... That yeah. could get sexual real quick. Yeah. <laughs> What else um, do you do will, on a web yeah, right? I'm, I'm curious, uh, what do you, I mean, Valentine's Day, in a way like Christmas, brings up a lot of anxiety and negative emotions in people. Um, uh, what do you say to people who are dealing with that, that issue? Yeah, I think you're right. I think it is a lot like Christmas, or I think about it as being almost like New Year's mm -hmm. for relationships, because that's a day that also comes with a lot of pressure, and there's this sense that, you know, it's New Year's, you should be out having a good time, and you should feel really sociable and connected and excited about the new year. And I think Valentine's Day as well can make people feel really stressed out like in terms of their relationship status. You know, if they're looking for a relationship and they haven't been able to find one, um, or if they're in a relationship, they can wonder, is this day kind of gonna be a litmus test for whether or not I'm in a successful, vibrant relationship? And it's a lot of pressure for people. And it can be a bit of a setup, I think, for conflict for a lot of couples. Uh, for couples? Yeah, I think so. What do you so. mean by that? A setup in terms of like we're supposed to do something really special on this day and it's supposed to be a day that elucidates our love and what if it doesn't or it's just a day and I think a lot of what I've seen is a lot of couples that really obsess about 
Valentine's Day or maybe couples that aren't doing so great with the ongoing affection love dynamic and they're kind of placing a lot of importance on that day. Well, it's interesting that you say that because um, there was this survey done. Um, 62% of, uh, this was of straight couples, 62% of men think Valentine's Day is just a Hallmark holiday. Mm. But 55% of women disagree. So a majority of men, straight men, think Valentine's Day is just meh, just another day. But the majority of women mm -hmm. look for that. I mean, you're, I mean, I mean, you're in a relatively new relationship. Uh, no, actually, it's been two years uh, Has now. it really been, been that two long? Years. Yeah. Wow. Two years. Um, I, I mean, do you, is it? I, what, well, this is the thing about Valentine's Day. I've kind of, I've, uh, this is going to sound weird, but I've kind of, I'm trying to take it back and own it in a different way and not make it about the social sort of norms behind it and rethink what it's supposed to be. And to me, it's a moment to sort of um, just be with the person that I'm with, just be with my girlfriend and kind of for myself, look at the relationship and what I appreciate about it and show her that I do. I think going and being like, oh, I have to buy her flowers and show her and do all these things so that on the scale of like a good Valentine's Day or bad, I've succeeded. Um, I think you're just, at that point, you're just listening to the crowd. And, right, but those you know, are like stereotypes, right? Like of like, I have to buy the flowers, whatever. But I think yeah. it does give you an opportunity to do those things both that are unique to them though, the things that they, like and you know because I mean we can't all be always you know buying and doing all of these things every time we see the person but it does give you an opportunity to do something that is unique to that so maybe flowers aren't their thing but maybe exactly, yeah. whatever. Well, like. you and your girlfriend, this is your first Valentine's together so <laughs> is this, I know, Matt is heartbroken. It's fine, um, it's fine. Um, I, we have a gay straight bromance going on at that end of the table. Um, <laughs> not, not much I mean, of is, so is Valentine's Day, is this going to be like a big deal for you guys? I feel like that's something her and I should discuss. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, we'll see. I mean, she, she, it's, it's an interesting situation, right? Because she's a, watching. Yes, she is. <laughs> Hi. Um, no, it's it's because she she's currently training uh, for a fitness competition in May. So there's a lot of things that are traditional, like you know going out and you know getting drinks and going to dinners and things like that 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 we can't do because it's not sort of on the program that she's on. So you know, like yeah, we're gonna do something. We're gonna spend some time together, and you know, I will find some way to express my feelings and. Some way, but I, I don't know exactly. Some it's not going to be the stereotypical, some you know, flowers and chocolates. It's going to be what makes sense for us and what works. Makes with. sense. Makes sense. Never mind. But it's his first. It's the first <laughs> one, so it's going to be important. Start though. low and just build. Yeah, that's my problem though. Just is that start I'm, at like one, well, and then the next thing go to two, three, well, and then your relationship will last. You know what I'm saying? Right. So Set the bar is, low. I mean, you have a girlfriend as that's well. That's what I plan to do. You know, it's going to be wild trash. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> It'll just keep getting better. You know, I'll, I'll find a box of uh, uh, heart-shaped chocolates, you know, in the trash, garbage. Fifteenth, maybe. You know, it will it'll be, you know, but the next time, plan. it'll blow her mind. It doesn't matter what I do. So the key to a successful relationship, in your mind, <laughs> or a successful is low. to give them something you found in the trash. <laughs> like that, I mean, that really sets the bar low. It could be trash, or it could be actually found in the trash. It's effectively the same thing. Okay. Right, so, garbage. Right. That's Good so one. sweet. Uh, <laughs> Good one. Adam, um, what advice do you have for single people then? I mean, you, you hear a lot of coupled people talking about, you know, how to, yeah. but what about single people who really are? Um, I think for single, single people, it's a little bit more like Christmas in terms of some people on Christmas are having that feeling of, I should be connected to a sense of family or you're walking by windows and seeing people gathering together and there's all this pressure that it should be this very warm family time. And I think as a single person on Valentine's Day. So how do you get through it? The kind of feeling excluded feeling. I think probably it's really good to make sure you're not isolated on Valentine's Day. If you're so, someone so who- So have a hunt, uh, invite friends over and have a hunt. Maybe, that might be a bit much, cat. I don't know. <laughs> But maybe if, it, but for some people, I don't think it's that evocative. I think for some people, they're pretty much at peace with okay, I'm single, and and they don't put a lot of stock in Valentine's Day anyway. 
But for those people where it is really stirring for them, it probably would be good to make sure they're doing something that they experience as nourishing. If that's going to a film or going for a nice walk or spending time with friends, something that actually attends to them in some way, uh, that would probably be a good plan. But also to give yourself permission to find it a little crummy and not feel like you should be able to be really optimistic not about it. Not feel bad about yeah, feeling bad. Yeah. Just I was like, about to say the opposite of that. Yeah. I was say, you know, like that's why you're feeling trash, why you feel bad. <laughs> like, like fight it. Why do you feel, yeah, why do you feel bad? Yeah. Like do, how do you not feel like the wild loser just sitting there like, wow, I'm not that thing. Yeah. <laughs> So really just go out and be promiscuous and... Yeah, is that what you're thinking? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying like don't even acknowledge it. It's just a day. Uh, it's just a day. Yeah. Um, well, we were talking about the, the, the straight relationships here. The Advocate actually did a, a thing. Ten sexy, sexy, unexpected, totally queer Valentine's Day gifts. And they included rainbow jewelry that's not tacky. I Are think, you I, joking? <laughs> I think any rainbow. I know. Yeah. It's a tough one. Um, Stick uh, to the flag and that's it. Um, uh, this just says make him your magic mic and like give him a little like no. lap dance. Lap dance, yes. Uh, I couldn't take myself seriously doing that. A sex toy that costs as much as a diamond ring. <gasps> what? Wait, how shitty a ring or how, <laughs> how awesome a how sex awesome toy. How awesome a sex toy. Yeah. <laughs> plan, a, plan a weekend getaway. That's nice. Uh, um, uh, Frozen chocolate. I don't really understand that. Um, it's just chocolate that they put in a freezer. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, What's anyway, not to get? What's uh, anyway, um, uh, this, this is kind of silly, but um, uh, how do gay men and lesbians, for that matter, uh, deal with Valentine's Day as opposed to straight couples? Do you oh, find that there's a difference? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that it has stood out to me as seeming really different, but maybe I would say that it seems like it might be a bit of a bigger deal in the straight world. That's just sort of based on my experience as a therapist in terms of people coming in and talking about those kinds of holidays. I, it sounds to me like it, can, it takes up a bit more space in the lives of certain straight people versus the queer community. Although as um, gay couples become more, and I hate using the word, but heteronormative, yes. you know, uh, getting married, having babies, is Valentine's Day becoming a bigger thing for gay couples? It's a good question. I wouldn't say for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised considering there's such an emphasis I mean, on marriage. Tito, I mean, you and your boyfriend, is it is Valentine's Day a big thing? Not really. I mean, I was I like to do stuff that I create, so like I make something. Like the first year, I did like a little booklet of like the 10 things I love about you type thing. So I just like to make handmade stuff instead of That's buying cute. something. That's cute. Cuz it's just more personal. Would you guys make sure to spend time together on that day or it's not necessary that you would do that? Yeah, I definitely would. I think you would. Yeah. See, for us, it, yeah. it, 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 we just like go to dinner. It's it, like not. Yeah, we don't like go all out for it. For but if Valentine's Day happens during the week, I'm sorry, I gotta work. I, yeah. I, you know, we just go it's, to dinner. It just becomes another though, day. Because like personally, like when I had back in the day when I had a boyfriend, um, I would like go all out. I don't know. I just like let's go, like go big or go home. It's like the one day, and it's like a little. Like, I feel like bending. going a little tacky, it's like cute. It's yeah. like, it's freaking Valentine's Day. Let's but also get... you were younger, so it's, I think it's different when the older you get, you just yeah, you stop yeah, caring about it. And, and you're stuff. so old Right, now. but is that that Anything. you stop caring about it or that you get complacent in your relationship and don't give a shit as much anymore? I think every like, day should be Valentine's Day, in my point, but then that day you just go a little extra. It gives, I, th I, I, I agree with you, actually, and I think it gives license to be more openly affectionate or Ooh. whatever than you normally would, you know, be able to or feel comfortable doing on a, like a Tuesday as it happens to fall this well, year. Well, that's you know? it. We're just going to have sex on the subway on Valentine's you know, Day. That's a little bit thing. more. There you yeah. go. Um, Adam, so <laughs> This what? guy gets it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, whether gay, straight, coupled, single, what's the best way for people to look at Valentine's Day as it's approaching? Like to, to, in order to keep sort of a healthy perspective on it. I think with a lot of couples, for couples, it kind of just unfolds organically where couples tend to have these traditions throughout the years. But I think when you're early in a relationship, it could be good to actually talk frankly about what your expectations are around that day. The same way you might about birthdays, that some people have birthdays that they like to really acknowledge and have some kind of attention paid to them on their birthday and other people are just like, I, I'm okay to have this just be like kind of a regular day and do something quiet. But to have it not just be unspoken would probably be a good idea. So communication. Communication. Like Isn't that the key to, for yeah. all couples? It's communication. Yeah. And in keeping with, I mean, I think 
those couples that maybe don't do stuff for Valentine's Day, you could see it as complacency, but you also could see it as maybe over time the relationship builds in enough strength and integrity that those days are less important, that, mm-hmm. that the love is there and it's not as much needed to be pointed out in this overt way on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Good advice. I try. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. I, I'm just going to slip in. I had a breakup on Valentine's Day. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, that's no. tough. We, we went out to a really nice dinner. We, had been seeing, we hadn't been seeing each other for that long. We went out to a really nice dinner. I was really it was trying to make it a nice night. I mean, in hindsight, it, there were issues. But um, we, the topic of marriage and children sort of came up. And as the conversation continued, we realized that we were on really two uh-huh. different roads. And the waiters and staff, like, it started getting a little, like, aggressive. The whole waiter, this waiter no one came to the table anymore. <laughs> on that, like, there was a, we were alone, no water refill, no nothing. It was Where's just us brain? arguing back and forth. And we left the restaurant. And it was like... Okay, and I went and took the streetcar and she jumped into a cab and that was it. Oh, wow. <laughs> was it this unspoken moment where it was like, well... So it was a mutual breakup. Bye. I'm pretty sure that's common, that there's yeah. a lot of breakups on Valentine's really? Day. Really? Why, why is that? Because it's, it's so filled with pressure. Or maybe a lot of couples don't talk about their relationship until so that, day. that day. And then you're like, it oh, just blows we up don't want face. anything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was... Well, thank you for that uplifting Valentine's <laughs> no, Day story. <laughs> See, so if you're single, you still have like a great night. <laughs> yeah. Your numbers will grow on yeah. Valentine's Day, yeah. potentially. <laughs> well, thank you. And now it's time for Tito's Midpoint. All right. So uh, this week we're playing Mute, uh, Mood Point again. Um, it's Valentine's Day themed. So um, they're just going to be some true or false Valentine's related questions. All right. So it's Mood Point, but you guys always suck at choosing the Mood Point. So just <laughs> tell me which one is true, which one you think is true. Okay. Okay, so first one. In Victorian times, it was considered this to sign a Valentine's Day card. Is it true love or bad luck? Uh, bad luck? Wait, we're choosing the one that's true? <laughs> Victorian times. Yeah. Felt, I'm, I'm the, everything felt backwards, so I'm going to yeah, say bad, bad luck. luck. Yeah, I'm going to say bad luck, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Bad luck. What? Why? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't research these questions. I was questions. born in Victorian times. <laughs> Um, based on retail statistics, about this many pet owners will give Valentine's Day gifts to their pets. Is it 3% or 13%? Oh, 13. 13%. I'm surprised it's not higher. Yeah. Same. I thought you were going to say 80. Same. It's actually 3%. <gasps> no. no. I don't believe Unless no. I did this wrong. <laughs> no, Tito, own, own it. Own it. It's your midpoint. I'm own pretty it. sure I got it right. Wow. I'm surprised I'm it's surprised that low. Too. People um, love their pets. Yeah. Actually, I think it is. I think it's thirteen. Anyway, <laughs> I'll take it later. In Finland, in Finland, Valentine's Day is called. Hold on, I need to try to pronounce this. Stavana Paiva. It's definitely not that. Which translates into this? Is it Friends Day or Family Day? Mm, family. family Day. Friends Day. Friends Day. Friends Day, just because you guys said yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's Friends Day. Oh. <laughs> take it. In Japan, women are <laughs> yeah, yeah, Matt, take it, take it. <laughs> In Japan, women are expected to give chocolate and other gifts to men on Valentine's Day. This tradition was started as a marketing campaign by Japanese chocolate companies. Men are expected to return the favor on March 14th, commonly known as what? White Day or Red Day? Red day. Red well, day. I would think I'm going to say white. Well, if white. Donald Trump were in charge of it, it would be White Day. Yeah, but it's since, definitely White Day. Is it White, white day? day? Wait, this is Japan, right? Yeah, Japan. yeah. yeah. White no. Day. Interesting. Why is it White Day? I don't know. <laughs> Listen, sweetie, I just come up with the questions. You can you can do the rest of the work. Okay. The, the Catholic Church struck Saint Valentine's Day from its official calendar in what year? 1869 or 1969? 1869. 1969. 1969. Really? Yeah. That recently. We went to the moon. Did did they do what? it on purpose because it was 69? I know. It's... I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. know. <laughs> yes, Fred. That is exactly what they did. <laughs> they giggled first. <laughs> oh. Those bishops. Those crazy bishops. This chocolates family is responsible for the earliest box of Valentine's Day chocolates. Is it Cadbury or Hershey's? 
Cadbury. Hershey's. Cadbury. Cadbury. I'm gonna say Hershey's. I'm gonna say Hershey's too. It's Cadbury. Oh. Yeah. The Brits. Yeah. <laughs> the Brits. Um, a percentage of U.S. women send themselves flowers on Valentine's Day. Twenty-five percent or fifteen percent. Fifteen. But my question is, do they lie and say it's from a guy? <laughs> Listen, you have too many questions today. <laughs> 15. 15. 15. I'll say 15. 15. 25. 15. 15. All right. Yeah. Um, on Valentine's Day, this many men would prefer not receiving a gift. More than one third of men or less than one third of men? Um, more than more one third. Than more than one, one third. third. Correct. Wow. So men, see, men don't. It was that survey. No, it's just because they know that if they get a gift, oh, they have to get no. one too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, like, don't get me anything. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard coming up with ideas though, like a gift. Has anybody like faked a gift to themselves from someone else just to like no. pretend? No. Well, that's what I was. Th I thought women would do with that's the flower. Really I did that in Who's high school. Have it, you d you've done that in high school? Yeah. I what like, What did you give yourself? Gonna call me out on that, but <laughs> <laughs> what did you give yourself? Like, okay, so in high school, herpes on Valentine's <laughs> Day. They sold, they sold like for three dollars. It was those like ugly flowers. What they called? Like pine? No, what's pine it called? Carnations. <laughs> Carnations, yeah. Or for five dollars, it was a rose. So like everyone would send like send people some, and like I sent like two roses to myself, and I was like, oh my god. Like, <laughs> I don't know, and I just did it. I just like completely lied about it, just because I don't know. That's I just really didn't want to be left out. I know it is really sad. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, oh god. Okay, Tito, we're we're All running right, this uh, is the last show on time. So this is a true or false. There's no options. Um, penicillin, a popular treatment for venereal diseases such as syphilis, was introduced to the world on February 14th, 1929. True. true. I have no idea. True. It's true, yeah. Yeah, they waited. Well, v, uh, VD can stand for Valentine's Day or venereal disease. Or vampire diaries. Or vampire diaries. <laughs> well, thank you, Tito, for that very informative midpoint. Was it, though? Well researched. Was it, though? <laughs> Hashtag, was it, though? I try. That brings us to talking point number two, love yourself. The, a recent article in Mashab on Mashable.com said why you should never tell your partner to stop masturbating. So the question is, because the, uh, uh, this comes up between couples, and Adam, I'd like your thoughts on this, that there are some partners that are offended when their partners are discovered masturbating, and they see it as cheating. Like, okay, who are you cheating with? Your fucking hand? <laughs> well, if, well, if if you're watching porn, it's like emotional wow. cheating. Emo yes. So the question is: Is masturbation cheating? No. Here's the thing. No, just no. No. Just simply no. Period. Yeah. Well, not <laughs> cheating, but okay. So here's the thing: like, it depends for me personally. Like in like past experiences, <laughs> a long time ago. Um, in your carnation days? <laughs> yeah. Um, I... Oh, God, I'm talking about this. It's kind of weird, but I... Uh, Remember, I, be graphic. Right. Um, I mean, like, if it's, like, a long-distance thing, obviously not, but it's, like, if I'm there, it's rude. I, I personally was, like, what the hell? And I, I would be, like, offended. I'd be, like, I'm right here. Like, I, you could use me. Like, I'm better than your own hand or porn. Like, so in that way, I get it, because I've personally been, like offended where I'd be like, I'm like, you know, it's, if like, I'm, I'm at work, blah, 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 then you, you do you, but it's like, if we're in the house together, like, why would you like, just be like, well, hey, what babe, if you're like, not in the, in the mood and but that's a different though. Like, if I'm, if I told you I'm not in the mood, do you deal with or, yourself? But, but also masturbation fine. is a different experience. Mm, then no. Well, it's it better is. to have the real thing than to like use your hand. Well, and but isn't it's well masturbation but, yeah. can be a real thing of a different kind. I mean, Adam, where where, where, <laughs> where do, do you, I weigh in here? Where do you weigh in? This is a hard one. I don't. I well, don't, hopefully, yes. Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't at all think masturbation is cheating. I think that that is a silly idea. I don't. I don't. I don't think that's helpful to couples to see it that way. But I do think. I mean, the, we talked about communication before. I think this is much more nuanced than just masturbating or not masturbating. It's like, 
you know, if you're, are you feeling disrespected by your partner? Is your partner masturbating in a way that seems kind of secretive or are they doing it while you're trying to have a conversation with them? Or like, <laughs> Can you, you put that away? <laughs> I'm talking to you. You've been I mean, there. Is there respect happening or does it feel like something is happening that's not respectful? And I think couples have to, people have to be acting in integrity with one another, you know? But I, I don't think we can say across the board, oh, masturbating is, is cheating. And I think what we're really looking at is for people who are freaked out by their partner masturbating, they're feeling a lot of fear. You know, they're feeling afraid of not being good enough. They're feeling afraid of, there's some sense of being threatened, which is often similar to maybe seeing your partner flirt with someone at a cafe or something like that. Well, that actually brings us to the next issue, which is this new concept called micro-cheating. Oh my God. Which is sort of like emotional cheating. It's a little way, you're not like having a full on affair with someone else. Affair even seems like a dated word. It sounds weird to say that. But um, Huffington Post did this article, 33 Ways Your Boyfriend Is Micro Cheating. And it's things like giving a waitress an obscenely large tip because she's hot. Um, following a ton of hot girls on social media. Um. <laughs> oh my God, I follow so many half naked guys, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Wait, but keep going, hold on. Uh, lo oh, I mean, this is from a straight perspective. Logging uh, a girl in his contacts folder under a code name, <laughs> tagging another girl in an Instagram that reminds him, um, obsess See, obsessively these... checking another girl's social media. Yes, some of these are, are some of them are real no, things that are yes. going to cause your relationship <laughs> to fall kidding. apart. Some of them are not real things. Is like that... the secret. Establishing inside jokes with uh, other women. No. Um, recommending that his girlfriend starts wearing a certain type of clothing because he secretly wants her to look like the girl he has a crush on. Okay, well, um, there's the problem. That's, that's, that's but see, that's, yeah. but Raven, I feel, I, I, oh, go ahead. I feel like there's a difference in situations like that when you're actively sort of already in your mindset looking at your relationship and yeah. comparing it to something else <laughs> and doing it. Whereas some of the other ones seem very sort of like just natural, daily sort of instances that could be read as mm -hmm. micro cheating. I mean, he pointed at me because we were having this conversation earlier. I, I have a fashion Instagram, so most of the people I follow are fashion Instagram bloggers, and a lot of them are women. And some of them post some more or less scandalous pictures, and it creates an issue where it's sort of like, are you looking at a bunch of naked women on Instagram all the time, or are these just you know, other women that fashion bloggers with a, with the same similar interest. So it's it certain points can be nuanced, but I think others are just like you're two steps away from cheating. Does so your girlfriend ever call you that's out on a that? Different. Uh, she has in the past um, when it's been like a little blatant sort of like it's just a naked picture of a girl <laughs> and she's like, I'm standing right here. Why did you like that? That's a little. I understand the nuance on that one. Where I was like, okay, that's disrespectful to you in that sense. But there's a difference between that and just having like. Adam, you and I talked a little bit about this before before we went on air. Um, uh, is micro cheating even? A th I feel like it's manufactured by things like Huffington Post and Cosmo. Buzzfeed. And all that. Yeah, it does feel like kind of a packaged little word that mm -hmm. I, I. I was thinking if I was seeing someone and they started to throw around micro cheating. I would probably end the relationship. You mean like you've been micro cheating on me? <laughs> yeah, it's just a bit much. It's just a bit much. I mean. Again, all these things are about feeling threatened. And, and I think we like to kind of compartmentalize them and be like, that thing is called micro-cheating, which is not requiring you to be vulnerable. We have to be willing with our partners to be like, I get a little vulnerable seeing you look at these women on Instagram and, or how connected you are to fashion or whatever, that, or that these women might hit on you. I feel vulnerable about that. Or these guys that. might hit on you. Or these guys might hit on you. <laughs> Honestly, though, yes. I get more guys hitting on yeah. me on Instagram well, than women. they're forward, I think. Yeah. It's a lot more. I just think yeah. there's a fine line between like following like hot girls and like it's just social media, whatever. Or like tipping the waitress and just getting flirty, whatever, just being nice, fine. But like going on this one account of this one specific girl and liking all her photos and commenting and then secretly and like DMing, like d direct messaging, like messaging these girls or whatever then that's like not it, okay. But do you like, think it's different for gay men though? No, it's the same thing. It's just really? like, Because I think gay men, no, like, some of these things are just not. preparing to cheat though, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, like it's just. Like if, my, if, if I get a girl's number and I save her number as something else, yeah. I'm going to You're, Yeah, there's, our, there's a bad intention. <laughs> it's not cheating, but it's on the way. Like Yeah, but you can't get me for that. Yes, right? I can't. If no. you're lying, no. If, you're, if, you're, if you get a phone number. 
No, just so I we're agree. clear, if we if you get a phone number from a girl and you're like, hey babe, I got a phone number today, I got hit on. Oh my god, good for you. Like I will be like, yes, like good for you, you got hit on, whatever. My That's boyfriend's not how hot. straight relationships. But work. Yeah. I'm just saying, get your man's. You know, he's getting, no, he's getting violent saying, and physical. If you get a phone number and then you keep it, but then you change their name to like another random name and then you text that random it's like Samuel. what are you doing like that's that's cheating that's like not okay like but okay so you were saying you were saying that you look at hot guys on instagram all the time i i, I mean I, I think and that's I, I, fine. I think gay I, but no I just think gay couples that's more acceptable no it's just it's really? fine it's a I fine all where i think it's fine like it's like he knows what I'm into, You're so if I look. follow guys that I'm into, like he doesn't care. But like sometimes if he's beside me and I like I specifically well, don't I'm like I'm a actually, picture, if he sees me what like looking, like I don't like it. I'm actually curious because uh, uh, I think this conversation goes beyond the group here. Um, I'm curious what uh, you out there think about micro cheating and what what's what you think the line is. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can comment down below or on Facebook or email us at thepointguys at gmail.com. Um, quickly, because we're running out of time. Um, this is very romantic. Um, Huffington Post did a story, 12 ways to have a successful threesome. Um, is that be four ways? No, 12 ways. Think about why you want a threesome. It's a math joke. <laughs> um, uh, 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 get, um, well, it says stay general, and then it says get specific. Like, whatever happens, happens, but then this is exactly what I want. Um, respect the, your partner's boundaries. Discuss protection. Um, I, I know this is a big topic to discuss in a very short period of time, but um, do you get um, uh, letters, questions about how to open relationships? I, ha I do get letters and questions about that, and I also have people coming to see me for therapy, talking that through, talking through... What, you know, whether this is a fantasy that they have or something they actually want to bring into reality. I mean, if I were to be really brief, I would say, kind of like couple, telling couples don't have kids to save the relationship, don't have a threesome to try to save the relationship, or don't try to open the relationship to save the relationship, mm -hmm. that you want your relationship to be in a pretty good place well, how, before you're considering all of these things. How do you know that you're ready to open up your relationship or have a three-way or something like that? On some level, probably you can never know for sure. There is some measure of risk of like emotionally, what is this gonna feel like? We can have notions of what it might feel like and then that's different when it actually unfolds. But you could have discussions about what you really want from this, what your intentions are. Do you want this to be something that's limited to a one-time experience? Are you open to there being some kind of relationship that continues with the third person? There's a lot to talk through probably, but certainly not something to do just as kind of a quick fix because you feel a bit bored in the relationship. And I, I do, uh, uh, this was on uh, Huffington Post, but again, this is an issue that I think there's a difference between straight couples and gay couples. Mm -hmm. I think gay couples are, yeah. I heard as a general rule, it's better, if you're gonna have a threesome, it's better to be the, the single person. In right. the well, in well then because you, you're less you don't have invested to deal with in jealousy. the whole situation. Well, you're also yeah. the new toy, so I get, both yeah. the others are concentrating on you. Right, right. <laughs> you well, get more attention. Best, that's, that's the best. But is this talking here. about threesomes within couples or just threesomes? No, in with couples, like having a, a threesome mm. with with your partner. Mm. <laughs> what, what, what's the hmm? Because <laughs> if, if you leave, like if your partner's at home and you're out part of another threesome, <laughs> that's a whole other issue I think that's going to come between you Although guys. Although that happens too. That happens too. Um, okay, we're running out of time. So uh, end points. Adam, yeah. um, you're with In Magazine or yep. your column runs on In Magazine. If people want to contact you, they have questions. Um, how can they contact you? They can go to the In Magazine website Which or is? Facebook. Which is? I don't know what that is. Okay, well, we'll get it on the screen. Okay, we'll get it on the screen. We'll get it on the screen. Yes. Um, but if people are interested in finding out more about you and your practice. I have a website, which is just my name, adamsegel.ca. Good. Yeah. And Dinesh, uh, people have fashion questions and... Uh, my Instagram is Dinesh Hanbury uh, on Instagram. Uh, you can drag message me on there or email me at dineshhanbury at gmail.com. And uh, I can answer any questions and any meetings anyone has. Yeah. Cool. Tito, Bop of the Week. Bop of the Week this week is Lost Kings featuring Tinashe, and it's called Quit You. Tinashe, you keep telling me this is her year. It is her year. This is her year. <laughs> okay. I, I, my end point, before we wrap up. I'm scared. Um, oh, okay. okay. It's it's so, uh, you know, chocolates are very, um, that's a big thing for Valentine's Day, right? Yes. Well, I was reading this story recently about insect protein and how oh, it's becoming a thing. No. 
right? No. And how there are more fa <laughs> insect farms. Um, oh my god, did you bring an ant farm? I didn't bring an ant farm. If you my, brought insects, I will run. My local grocery store started selling edible insects. Oh. And I actually have chocolate dipped insects. I don't know if we can get a close up on that. But we also have crickets. And they had many flavors. This is salt and vinegar flavored. Oh, oh that's good. good. Mm. And now the chocolate ones, at least, are covered in chocolate. Oh my gosh, but show the, me that. The show salt me that. and vinegar ones. Oh my anyway, god. Anyway, you guys can uh, can munch on those. These look oh like little god. rats. <laughs> they look like Fucking little lab rats. Box of crickets <laughs> that someone is making a profit off of. But you can eat those. They're edible. You guys, this is not okay. <laughs> this is the future of our food supply. <laughs> salt and vinegar. Vinegar, okay. like <laughs> different kinds. They had barbecue. You mean one is salt and one is vinegar? They had powder. barbecue. I would eat the chocolate okay. one. Okay, okay, the chocolate. Dinesh is gonna I'll, have some. I'll okay. eat the chocolate Go. one. Go for it. Okay, we're okay. so our website, uh, thepointguys.net. Check us out there for all things having to do with The Point. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to us right here. Um, oh iTunes. He's gonna do it. iTunes, subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, Our crowdfunding site is on Patreon. It tastes like chocolate. Dot com <laughs> slash the point guy. Here, eat one of those. <laughs> we, <laughs> we have a new episode every Tuesday, so we will. It actually, tastes delicious. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> so, <laughs> we will see you next Tuesday on the point. Oh God. <laughs>